The world is in turmoil. The war in Ukraine is changing the global power balance. Two powers are shifting positions getting ready for change. Russia's Vladimir Putin wages war in Europe in a bid for relevance and support at home. China's Xi Jinping makes history with a third term in charge and a mission to expand China's global influence. Caught between the two, geographically, politically and economically, is Kazakhstan. Its huge oil and gas resources make it very interesting to both China and Russia, its huge neighbors. We are in Astana, the capital of the Republic of Kazakhstan. There behind me, the building with the blue cupola, is the presidential palace. Kazakhstan is the ninth biggest country in the world by area, but it only has 20 million people. That's less than Florida. Kazakhstan shares a huge border with Russia and relations are complicated. It's in that palace that Kazakhstan's geopolitical position between Russia and China meets the national interest to create a very particular way of dealing with the world. Kazakhstan's foreign policy is officially described as multi-vector. Simply put, that means the predominantly Muslim nation stays equally close to or distant from everyone – Russia, China and the West. This is not an easy balancing act. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, the country's first president, brought Kazakhstan into NATO's Partnership for Peace program. But he also made it a member of the Russian-dominated Eurasian Economic Union and the Collective Security Treaty Organization. And he was also one of the co-founders of the China-sponsored Shanghai Security Organization. Nazarbayev established this balancing act at the heart of Kazakh politics, which he dominated from independence in 1991 until 2019. His successor, Kasim Jomar Tokayev, so far continued this multi-vector strategy. Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine tests this policy to the full. Many Kazakhs feel very uneasy and even unsafe when they see many parallels to Ukraine. It's not only that both countries have a long border with Russia. There is strong and deep Russian influence in Kazakhstan, as was once in Ukraine before the war. More than three million native Russian speakers live in Kazakhstan, like in the east and south of Ukraine. And in many major cities, people often speak Russian as well as Kazakh. Relations with Russia have been good. The balancing act held in 2014 when Russia annexed Crimea. Kazakhstan did not recognize the annexation, but also didn't cut ties with Moscow. And in 2021, Kazakhstan's trade turnover figures put Russia at the top spot with around $22 billion. But as Joanna Lillis told me, Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine threw that balancing act into doubt. She worked as a journalist and author in Kazakhstan for nearly two decades. She saw the Kazakh elite realize things had changed and that they were in a dangerous position. We see every sign that Kazakhstan's political leadership um, from President Tokayev down um, is, is very rattled by the invasion of Ukraine, by Russia's aggression. Um, in another part of the former Soviet Union, in a neighbouring country, um, and that it, it, it's taking measures um, in order to um, not be caught up in that as far as possible, not to be caught up in the political fallout, not to be tarnished by the West as a, as a sort of um, pro-war ally of, of Russia, um, and not to be caught up in the economic fallout. Now, of course, it is caught up in all of that, especially the economic fallout, perhaps. But I think um, best uh, this is best summed up, perhaps, by um, a deputy foreign minister who put it very nicely. Kazakhstan has no intention of ending up behind um, a new Iron Curtain. And I think that's the policy of the leadership. That policy can be seen right here. These Russians fled Putin's conscription of men to fight in Ukraine. They headed for Kazakhstan. It's estimated that between 200,000 and 400,000 found a welcome and a promise that they wouldn't be sent home. It's one way for President Tokayev to show his people and the world that he's not doing Putin's bidding. For Kazakhstan's political opposition, this distancing from Russia is a desirable and inevitable process. Nurjan Altaev used to be a deputy minister, 
Now he leads an opposition party called Tirige Yel, Pillar of the People. They're closely monitored by the government and have little chance of coming to power soon, but they are tolerated to a degree that Putin's opponents at home could only dream of. Altaev speaks for many when he says Kazakhstan should accelerate the distancing process from Russia. Это старая вот эта традиция, то есть у нас сейчас во власти еще и в элите очень много людей, которые вышли из Советского Союза. Они привыкли подчиняться Москве, они привыкли оглядываться на Москву, они не привыкли принимать каких-то самостоятельных решений. Они все время оглядываются и смотрят, что же там скажут, и пытаются отреагировать на то, что происходит в Москве. Это абсолютно неправильно, но мы видим, что эти люди постепенно сейчас будут уходить на второй план, они просто будут, эти люди будут уходить со сцены. И сейчас приходят новые люди, по сути, новые молодые люди, у которых... Абсолютно которых ничего не связывает с Москвой, ничего не связывает с Россией. Молодые политики сейчас, которые говорят о том, что нам, может быть, больше нужно ориентироваться на более цивилизованный мир, на Запад, на Европу, на Соединенные Штаты. Есть люди, которые говорят, нам нужно больше сближаться с тюркскими странами, с Турцией, с Азербайджаном, Узбекистаном, Кыргызстаном, потому что это единая кровь, единые гены, язык, религия и так далее. То есть сейчас уже большая часть населения... Вы знаете, Казахстан довольно молодая страна, у нас очень много молодежи, и молодежь она абсолютно уже себя никак не ассоциирует с Советским Союзом или там, с Российской Федерацией. So, Казахстан may be shifting its diplomatic balance away from Russia. Does that open an opportunity for China to step in? Remember the geography and all that oil and gas? All very interesting for China too. And Beijing is already a major player in Kazakhstan. It's only a couple of billion dollars behind Russia in terms of trade, in second place with around 19 billion dollars of turnover. Evan Feigenbaum was U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Central Asia under President Barack Obama. He says China is an inevitable new focus for Kazakhstan and, by extension, the region. What China is leveraging is the map in the first instance, and in then the second instance, economic gravity. When I say the map, it's because China is just geographically contiguous to the region. And so if you're a landlocked region that's looking for additional infrastructure links, additional markets, additional connections to the global economy, and in particular, if you're trying to foster alternatives to Russia, China is part of that geographic reality. And that's why China's an, it's an opportunity from the Central Asian perspective, but China strategically has been, to, has been able to leverage realities of the map in its favor. But the main thing China's trying to leverage is economic gravity. Uh, China is not just a trader, it's a builder, it's a lender, um, and it's an investor. And so from the standpoint of governments, that creates, uh, as I said, options and opportunities. But many in Kazakhstan view those options and opportunities with deep suspicion. When I first came here in 1994, Almaty was the capital of the newly established state of Kazakhstan. But only three years later, President Nazarbayev ordered the government and the capital to be moved to the center of the country, to Astana. Officially, the move was to avoid earthquakes, which are frequent in this mountainous area. But here we are just 400 kilometers from the border with China. And this would have been a consideration too. The Chinese haven't won over ordinary Kazakhs either. Workers at Chinese enterprises in Kazakhstan have rioted over the last decade. Their grievances? Harsh working conditions, weak environmental protection, and what might be at best Chinese managers' condescending attitude, and at worst, their racism. Opposition politician Nurjan Altaev says a pivot from Russia to China would be very frightening for Kazakhs. Народ наш очень боится китайцев, боится китайской экспансии. Это вот когда только вот возникает какой-то вопрос о том, что там вот китайские инвестиции, либо там какие-то земли передать в аренду для того, чтобы они там использовали, все, сразу же у нас народ встает на дыбы и говорит, что нельзя этого делать. Ну, возможно, что народ где-то чувствует и 
чувствует определенную опасность на инстинктивном уровне. I found a leading Kazakh political analyst to explain the dilemma his country's leadership is in. Dosim Satpaev was speaking with representatives of German businesses operating in Kazakhstan. Отношения с Китаем у руководства Казахстана это палка двух концах. То есть, с одной стороны, не понимая, что Китай может быть неким контрбалансом, и стать очень важный момент, что именно Китай будет менее всего заинтересован в попытке реализовать проект Крым наш в Казахстане, да, там, через северные территории. Хотя бы потому, что Китай вбухал сюда много инвестиций, там, 30 миллиардов долларов. Через Казахстан проходит э, маршрут важный, One Ballot, One Road. Для Китая Казахстан важен как стабильное государство из-за Синьцзяня, Афганистана. То есть, в этом плане Китай однозначно против любых каких-то военных конфронтаций России. Но, с другой стороны, антикитайский настроение в Казахстане никто не отменял. И кто кого придется, то учитывать. И в этом его ловушка, значительная ловушка. Президент Токаев's conundrum is indeed very difficult. He needs to keep relations with China active as a counterweight to Russia, which feels increasingly threatening. And yet, getting too close to China could provoke unease among Kazakhstan's elite and even unrest on the streets. China seems uninterested in such delicate considerations. In September 2022, Xi Jinping used an official visit to Astana to launch a new idea. The day before he arrived, he published this. Xi later pitched the same ideas at the summit of the Shanghai Security Organization. It sounded like a major proposal, a confident Chinese step forward in the region. But does it mean Beijing is ready to replace Moscow as Kazakhstan's security guarantor? Journalist Joanna Lillis thinks it might. It sounded like a kind of shot across the bows to Russia, um, don't do anything in Kazakhstan. Um, now we know that China has not, be, has not condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine, although it's certainly not offered wholehearted support either. Um, but I, I, I do think that that was a real statement to Russia that um, there are red lines for China and probably, um, you know, getting entangled in one of our neighbors, China's neighbors, is a red line for us. And I think that's going to be very welcome to the Kazakh leadership to hear a really, a really mighty power kind of warning Russia not to um, encroach, although of course they didn't name Russia. China would not be prepared to open its security umbrella over Kazakhstan and the whole of Central Asia, says former US diplomat Evan Fiegenbaum. This kind of stuff, commitment to sovereignty, territorial integrity, this is boilerplate in Chinese foreign policy. In fact, China has had a lot of the same things to say about Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. And where has that led us since February 24th? And so if I were sitting in Kazakhstan, I certainly wouldn't expect much from the Chinese in terms of picking a fight with Russia or uh, fracturing their relationship on anybody's behalf. China is not prepared to act as a proxy for anybody else. They're acting in their own interest. So I read this, as I said, more as boilerplate. And I think the game for Kazakhstan is to try to foster a sense of balance, including in a way that thinks, makes Moscow think twice. But tangibly, I don't expect much. If China is unwilling to step in with firm security guarantees and Russia is losing influence, what should the West do? It already has well-established relations with Kazakhstan and don't forget that oil. Collectively, the EU is an even greater trading partner than Russia. US and European energy companies such as Chevron and ENI are heavily involved in the Transcaspian pipeline project, which takes gas to Europe without passing through Russia. Western powers want this kind of thing to continue. And that would require Kazakhstan to continue its political balancing act, says political analyst Dosim Satpaev. Ни США, ни Европейский Союз не хотят, чтобы они стали ни китайским, скажем так, частью китайского некого блока, ни тем более попали под влияние России вместе, как вот Беларусь сейчас, да, в общую там лодку с Россией сесть. Они хотят, чтобы этот регион, он был в лучшем случае нейтрален. But if the West wants Kazakhstan to turn away from Russia and not turn to China, it will need to factor in Kazakhstan's security and defense priorities. This very long avenue in Astana is Kazakhstan's main parade ground. It's here that the president reviews the troops on the official Fatherland's Defenders Day each May 7th. Putin's war against Ukraine suddenly directed focus towards Kazakhstan's armed forces, 
and their state of readiness. And they look pretty vulnerable. They are plagued by rampant corruption and are dependent on Russian-made weapons and Russian-based training. Corruption can only be fixed by the Cossacks themselves, but the West could help in other areas, says journalist John Lillis. I do think that um, the West could give specific security assistance in terms of improving Kazakhstan's armed forces um, so that it is better positioned to face down a threat. Now, I can't obviously speak for the government, um, but I do think that the, the, the noises that the government's making about improving the armed forces, greater spending on the armed forces, could indicate that it might be open to that kind of assistance. And obviously it should be transparent, it shouldn't be misconstrued, um, but I, I do think that that would be an area where the West could help. The military is not the only area where foreign powers could have influence. Across the region, China is offering economic growth to a new generation no longer automatically looking towards Russia. Kazakhstan's leadership may want to continue its international balancing act, but the ground is shifting under its feet. Russia may bleed its men, money and credibility in Ukraine but it still sees Kazakhstan as an indispensable economic partner and strategic gateway to Central Asia. With China poised to push expansion of its influence in the region, and maybe at Russia's cost, Kazakhstan may find itself under pressure from both regimes. As the standoff between the US and China becomes global, the West would be wise to pay attention to Kazakhstan and work out what to do fast.